Okay, guys, today we're going to talk about autos. Okay, uh, in auto sales, appearance is everything or almost everything. It is certainly the most important single factor in a consumer's decision to buy this or that make. This is a quote by Henry Earle, who invented the uh, Corvette. Okay, so what he's saying here is uh, when you're looking at a car, when you go to an auto uh, sales place, um, all the cars will look perfect. They will be clean. They will be washed. They'll be washed every day. Uh, you'll see that they have water beads sitting on top of them, okay, because it makes the car look good. And when you look at a car and you look, you know, you'll buy a car that you normally would not buy uh, if it looks good enough, okay? So, in, but before we can really talk about autos much, we got some vocabulary we need to learn. Okay, so the first thing is a sales tax which pretty much says exactly what it is. A sales tax is a tax on, on items that are purchased. When you buy something, you get taxed a percentage of what that uh, item is worth. Okay, now we don't see that in Oregon. We don't have a sales tax here. Um, but almost every state has a sales tax. Sometimes it's sometimes a sales tax is called a VAT task or a value added task tax. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. Okay, a function. All right, a function is an equation. where every x has exactly one y. Every x has exactly one y. Okay, so could be something like this. That is a function. Okay, no matter where I go on the x-axis, there is exactly one answer on the graph, okay? Now, what is not a function? Well, this would not be a function right here if I had something that looked like this. Okay, because if I go out here to this x right here, there's two y's. There's a y right here, and there's a y right there. This is not a function. This is a function. So we actually have a test. The test is called the vertical line test. Okay, so you can say it passes the vertical line test. Okay, that's usually the easiest way to tell if something's a function is you, put, you just look at a graph of it and you see, if I draw a vertical line anywhere I want to, does it only pass through the graph at one spot? So if I look here, if I made a vertical line here or here or here or here, anywhere I want, it's only going to cross this graph at one place. But if I do it here, right here, it passes at two places, here and here. And so it doesn't pass the vertical line test, so it's not a function. Okay. All right, the domain. The domain is the set of all numbers that can be put into an equation. Okay, so you might say, well, what kind of numbers can't you put in an equation? Well, it depends. Let's say we had an equation like um, y equals 1 over x. Okay, well, I can put every single number into that equation except for one number. I can't put 0 in here. Okay, 
So we would say, we would write it like this, the domain, when you see a double bar D like that, that means domain is the set of all X's except X cannot equal zero. This is a way to write the domain, okay? X can't be zero because you can never divide by zero. Okay, if this was uh, y equals one over x minus one, now I couldn't, it couldn't, it could be zero, it can't be one. Okay, because one minus one in the denominator would be zero, and so I, I couldn't put that in there. Or if I had an equation like uh, uh, y equals the square root of x, well, I can't put in any number less than zero in there. Okay. So I would say that the domain is the set of all x's where x is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, I can't put any negative numbers in there because you can't square root a negative number. Okay, so that's what domain is. Independent variables. Let's move this down a little bit. Oops, I can't. Okay, so there are two variables in an equation. There's the dependent and the independent variable. So when I have an equation like, uh, let's say I have an equation like y equals 2x plus 1. That's just a line. Okay? I have two variables. I have my x and my y. The independent variable is the x in this case. Okay? So it can be anything that I want it to be. I can plug any number in there for x, but y is dependent upon what x is, okay? I, I don't know what y is until I know what x is, okay? So this is usually, not always, usually the x in an equation, okay? And um, it is the variable that can be anything. See, the y can't be anything that it wants. It can only be one thing, and it depends on the x. So if I know that x is 2, then y has to be 5. So the y is dependent upon the x. x is independent. It can be anything. It could be negative 1. If I put negative 1 in here, I get negative 2 plus 1 would be negative 1. Okay, so then the y would have to be negative 1. So the dependent variable is um, usually the y. variable that depends on the input variable. Okay, so if we say that uh, y equals one half x minus seven, okay? The y is definitely the dependent variable because it depends on what the x is, okay? Okay, like I said, this is, uh, this is the input. And this is the output. Okay, function notation. So most of the time you've seen this kind of notation right here, y equals mx plus b, or you know, you could have something like, uh, I don't know, 
uh, y equals uh, 2x squared minus x plus 4. There's a quadratic. Okay. But we can also write that as function notation. So the only difference is um, function notation is, is written like this. f of x equals 1 half x minus 7. Okay, this is your function notation. Or we could say f of x equals 2x squared minus x plus 4. So basically what you're going to do in function notation, you're going to take the y out and you're going to put f of x in its place. And the reason that you do that is you can write things like this. f of 2. Well, that just tells me I'm going to put 2 in here for my x. Okay, and this is going to be 1 minus... 7 is going to be negative 6. Okay. Or I could write f of 0 right here. That just means I put 0 in here and here, and I get 0 minus 0 plus 4 is 4. Okay, so function notation, it's just putting an f of x in place of the y. That's the only difference. Okay, piecewise functions. Piecewise functions are um, functions that have different um, equations depending upon what the input is. So we did a little bit of stuff with this earlier this year. So uh, it would be something like this. Uh, f of x would equal, you know, x plus 1 if x is less than 0, and uh, x squared if x is greater than or equal to 0. That's a piecewise function. So if the input is less than 0, you're going to use this equation, and if it's greater than 0 or equal to 0, you're going to use that equation. That's what a piecewise function is. You can have as many pieces in here as you want. Evaluating functions. Evaluating functions just means um, finding the solution to a function. Okay, so up here, when I did this, this is evaluating a function right here. Okay, here's my function. I evaluated it at 2. So I plugged in 2, and I got an answer. That's it. OK, Kerry purchased a used car for $7,400, had to pay an 8.5% sales tax. How much tax did he pay? OK, so remember, this is the biggest problem. 8.5% um, is 0 0.085. And you're going to multiply that. Okay, so 7,400 times 0 0.085 is $629. That's his tax. Pretty easy to calculate. The value added or sales tax in Europe is 21%, and that goes on everything you buy there food, cars, everything. Okay, they charge an extra 21%. So if Marianne purchases a car for $20,000, what is the total cost of the car with the sales tax? Okay, so the total cost of the car. So that's going to be the cost of the car plus the tax. Okay, there's two ways you can do this. You can take the cost of the car, $20,000, times 0 0.21 and figure out what the tax is. So the tax would be $4,200 on the car, 
okay? And then the total cost of the car is going to be uh, this added to that, so uh, plus 20,000. This is cost of car. And your total cost is going to be $24,200. Now there's a shorter way you can do this. You could just take the 20,000 times 1.21. So 20,000 times 1.21 gives you $24,200. Okay, so I got the same answer. Why would I do this? Well, I would do this if I needed to know also what the, tax, the actual tax is. Okay, this tells me this is the tax, this is the cost of the car. If I just want the answer of what the total cost is going to be, I'd probably just do this. Okay, so why does this work? Well, this is your tax right here, and this, when you multiply by one, that just gives you the original value back. Okay, so it's going to give you this value plus 21%, which is the, the tax on the car. All right, the cost of an automobile advertisement is determined by its length. Okay, these are piecewise functions, okay? Johnny plans to sell his car and places a five-line ad in an auto enthusiast publication. The publication charges $31 for the first two lines and $6 per extra line to run the ad for a week. What will Johnny's ad cost to run for two weeks? Okay, so I could write down the function of this thing. Okay, it costs $31 um, for the first two lines. So X is less than or equal to 2. And it costs 31 plus 6 times X minus 2 when X is greater than 2. All right, now why, where did I come up with this? We kind of did this last semester. So this is the, this is the cost for every ad is going to be at least $31. And then $6 for every line past the first two. That's why I take the number of lines as X and I subtract two because those first two are included here. I don't want to include them. I don't want to add uh, additional $6 for them. Okay, so here's my piecewise function. Now, he wants to place a five line ad, okay? So I look here, well, X is not less than or equal to two, so I'm gonna skip this, I'm gonna use this one, okay? So he's going to pay $31 plus 6 times 5 minus 2. Okay, so he's going to pay $31 plus 6 times 3. Because remember, the first two lines are included in the $31. Okay, and then the next three lines are going to cost him $6 a line. So that's going to be 31 plus 18, which is $49. So I just evaluated that function, my piecewise function, I just evaluated that at, um, at five, okay? So I can say this is f of five. So I did a whole bunch of things from that previous page. I wrote a piecewise function. I wrote it in function notation. I evaluated that function and I solved the equation. Okay, uh, oh wait, it's gotta run for two weeks, sorry. So we're not done yet. So that's $49 per week. Then I gotta multiply that by two. So that's gonna be $98. Okay, so be careful. Uh, what will Johnny's ad cost to run for X weeks? So I don't know how many weeks. I just want to know for X weeks. All right, well, it's going to be $49, okay, times X number of weeks. So it's just going to be um, 49X. And we can say that this is C of X, cost of X. X weeks, where X is weeks. Uh, 
the equation relating cost in the time of Johnny's ad is run x weeks is a function. A function is a relationship that takes one input value x, the weeks, and turns it into one output value, the price for the ad. So that's what I did right here. So here's my price of the ad, and here's my number of weeks. Okay, evaluating some functions. So these are all written in function notation. There's six equations, and I want to know what f of 8 is, so I'm going to evaluate it at 8. Okay, so all I'm going to do then is uh, plug in 8 here. So this is 2 times 8 plus 1, which is 16 plus 1, which is 17. On this one, if I plug in negative 4, I get 3 times negative 4 minus 1, which I do the parentheses first, is 3 times negative 5, which is negative 15. Here I do uh, 9 times negative 2 squared, and make sure the parentheses are around the negative, okay? So, because that makes up positive 4. And 9 times 4 is 36. Okay, so I've got three more functions down here for you. Here's what I'd like you to do is I want you to pause this video, and I want you to evaluate those functions, and then come back on here and look and see what if you got the same answer that we did. So go ahead and pause it now. Okay, so let's evaluate these last three functions here. So C of 13 would be 4.65 times 13. I'm just going to get out my handy dandy T84 plus C silver edition graphing calculator and go 4.65 times 13. 60.45. I have evaluated that function. Now this is a weird one. I think when I typed this originally there was a typo in here, but I kind of want to look at this, okay? So it says P of X is 4.30 plus 2.7. And it says find P of 6. Well, you'll notice there's no X in this equation anywhere. Which means that it doesn't matter what number I put in, I'm going to get the same answer every time. It's going to be 4.30 plus 2.7. That's going to be 7. So the answer to this is 7 all the time. That's a very tricky thing. Okay, people, they, 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 get, they don't know what to do with that because they, they're expecting to put an X in there. There's no X. So you just evaluate what is it. Okay, so P of 10 is going to be 7. P of 100 is 7. P of negative 1 half is 7. It's always 7. Okay, and then uh, this last one here. Okay, H of, ne of 6 is going to be negative 2 times 6 squared which is negative 2 times 36, which is negative 72. All right, let's move on. Jason works for Glen Oak News and is, is writing a program to compute the cost. He to enter an algebraic representation of the cost of an ad that is X lines long. His company charges $42.50 for up to five minutes there are five lines in an automotive ad. Each additional line costs seven dollars. Below is the piecewise function that algebraically expresses the cost c of x of an ad with x lines as a function of x. Notice that after five lines the cost equation changes. So let's take a look at this down here. So when there's five lines or less it's 4250. Okay but then if you get a sixth line or anything above six, it changes from 4250 to 4250 plus seven times X minus five. Okay, so if I have 10 lines, I'm gonna get charged 10 minus five is five. I'm gonna get charged for an additional five lines at $7 a line plus the original cost. The domain for each of the functions is written to the right of the piece. So here's my domain over here. Okay, the second equation shows the cost will start at $42.50, but we'll add $7 for each line over five lines. Okay, so 
find the cost of each of the following ads. So a two line ad, two is less than or equal to five, I use this, it's 42.50. How about a three line ad? Oh, it's still less than or equal to five, it's still 42.50. What about a five line ad? Oh, still less than or equal to five, still 42.50. Okay, six line ad. Now I've changed, I've changed this equation right here. So it's going to be uh, 42.50 plus seven times six minus five. Okay, six minus five is one, so it's an additional seven dollars, which makes sense. So this is gonna be 42.50 plus seven, which is uh, $49.50. A seven line ad, 42.50 plus seven times seven minus five, so 42.50 plus seven times two, which is 42.50 plus 14, which is 56.50. And finally, a 10 line ad. I'm gonna let you pause this. I'm gonna let you put that into the equation yourself figure out the answer, and then come back here and check your answer. Okay, so a 10 line ad would be 4250 plus seven times 10 minus five, which would be 4250 plus seven times five, which would be 4250 plus 35, which would be $77.50. Okay, none of these are really difficult. Just gotta be paying attention to which equation you use. Okay, the Milwaukee News charges $38 for a classified ad that is four or fewer lines long. Each line above four lines costs an additional $6.25. Write the piecewise function that gives the cost of X lines. There should be two equation pieces and two domains, one for each piece. Okay, so here we go. It's going to cost $38 um, for the first four lines. So X is going to be less than or equal to 4. Now, it's going to be $38 plus $6.25 for anything over four lines. So that's gonna be 6.25 times X minus four when X is greater than four. Okay, so here's my domain over here. That's this part. Here's my equations. This whole thing together is my piecewise function. So evaluate each of the following ads. Move these up a little bit. Okay, so a three line ad. Tell you what, I'm gonna let you pause this, figure out all six of these yourself, and then come back and check them against what, what I get. So pause it here. Okay, so a three line ad, that three is less than four, so it's gonna be $38. A four line ad is less than or equal to four, so that also is gonna be $38. A five line ad, now that's out of this domain, it's into this domain, so I'm gonna use this equation. Okay, so that's gonna be, uh, 38 
plus 6.25 times 5 minus 4. So that's 38 plus 6.25 times 1, which is just going to be 38 plus 6.25. So we're going to go straight to the answer. That's going to be $44.25. Okay, a six line ad. Well, that's $38 plus 6.25 times six minus four, which the six minus four is two. And that's 12.5 plus $38, which is gonna be $50 and 50 cents. An eight line ad. 38 plus 6.25 times eight minus four. Or 38 plus 6.25 times four all right, 6.25 times 4, that's going to be uh, 12 50, that's going to be $25. So it's going to be 38 plus 25. It's a terrible two. Who wrote that? Got to take pride in your numbers. Okay, so that's going to be $63. All right. And then finally, a 10 line ad. Okay, so that's going to be 38 plus 6.25 times 10 minus 4. That's going to be 38 plus 6.25 times 6. All right, 6.25 times 6, 37.50 plus the original $38, $75.50. Okay, we've got some additional practice here. So, so Joanna works for a different newspaper. Here's a graph, graph of the advertising cost, okay? So if you look here, advertising stays the same until you get to four lines, okay? Here's the number of lines. Once you reach four lines, it starts to go up, okay? And it goes up in a nice straight line, so it's a fixed amount. It says, using the graph, find the cost of an ad with three lines. Okay, that's easy. One, two, three. It's, what is it, third, that's 30. Uh, one, two, three, four. So it's going to be 32, 50, 35, 37, 50, 40. So each one of these lines is $2.50. Okay. So, uh, that's going to be uh, thirty-seven fifty. Okay. So according to this, thirty-seven dollars and fifty cents. That's probably the hardest thing about this problem is figuring out how much each one of these lines right here is. Okay. Find the cost for an ad with seven lines. Okay, seven lines is going to be right here. I'm going to go up to there. Go straight across to here. Remember, one, two, three, four, four. Oh, wait a minute. What's the deal? Oh, I think, you know what? It's not a very good graph. I think the 30 actually goes on the bottom of this thing right here. So that's 30. This would be, that makes this easier. So 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. Yeah, so each line would be $2. All right, let's do this again. Okay, so this would actually be $38 then. Okay, so then the cost of a seven line ad, still gonna go here and then across to here. 
So this is 50, 52, 54, 56. So that's going to be a $56 ad. So write the piecewise function for the situation using the following information. Cost stays at $38 for any ad up to four lines, and then $6 per line. Okay, after four lines. So um, this is going to be $38 when x is less than or equal to 4. And it's going to be $38 plus $6 times x minus 4, because you've got to take away the first four lines when x is greater than 4. Use your piecewise function to evaluate the following. Check your answers on the graph. Okay, so f of 3, that definitely falls in here. That's 38 bucks. And f of 7 definitely falls in here. So that's going to be 38 plus 6 times 7 minus 4, or 38 plus 6 times 3 which is 38 plus 18, which is, uh, what, 56? $56. And that matches with what we got looking at the graph. Yep, matches just what we had on the graph there. Okay. The cost of parking at PDX International Airport, short-term parking, is shown to the left. So if you look, the cost is pretty steep. It goes up really quickly until it reaches here, then it just flattens out. Okay? So you can see these are by hours. So for nine hours, the cost goes up. Once you hit nine hours, it's just flat. Okay? So what is the cost to park for two hours? Well, let's see, I would go over here to two, would be right here, and I'd go up here. And it looks like it's gonna be, each one of these lines is a dollar, I think. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, each one's a dollar, so that's gonna be six bucks. Okay, uh, eight hours. So I'd go here to eight. Go right over here. $24 for eight hours. Nine hours, that's going to be right here. That's going to cap you out right there at $27. How much does it cost to park for 10 hours? 27 bucks, because you're capped out now. Everything is going to be $27 after that. Okay, so write a the piecewise function. All right, the second part of this is actually the easy part. It's going to be $27 when x is uh, greater than or equal to, what was it, 9? 9. Okay, then you got to figure out how much it is an hour. So it looks like it's uh, $3 an hour. All right, so it's going to be uh, 3 times x when x is less than uh, 9. Actually, it's less than or equal to 9. And the, we'll take this off of here. Okay, because it stays all the way up to 9. At $9, it caps out right there. And then it just stays 9 when it's greater than 9. So that's a pretty easy piecewise function to write. You don't have to subtract anything. So then we're going to use the piecewise function to evaluate the following. Okay, find f of 2. All right, I plug in 2. That's 3. Whoops. That's uh, 3 times 2, which is $6. And f of 10, that's just greater than 9, so it's just 27. Done. 
Okay. And uh, those match up with what we got up here. All right, now you get to do pages five and six of your packet for homework, and they look, there's page five, and there's page six, and I will post those in Google Classroom with nicer pictures. So uh, I will see you next time.